The Ahousat First Nations village of Moctisi is nestled in the ancient rainforest on the west coast of Vancouver Island. The isolated community is home to roughly 1,000 residents and is only accessible by floatplane or a 40 minute boat ride from Tofino, British Columbia. My English name is Rebecca Atlio. I am the director of education for the community and members of Ahousat. Some of the challenges are that um, they have a difficult time in the formal system at times um, with the education system. And we have a lot of attendance and lateness problems. And But however, we are also having successes with the education that they're receiving in the school. Um, but the challenges, I believe, is the isolation that we have in the house and not many activities that are normally presented out here with the arena, the pool, the gyms and what have you. So, you know, there's lack of activities in, in the community. My name is Grant Schilling. I'm the founder and Grand Tutti Capi of Get On Board. Well, in 2013, Get On Board went out to a house at First Nation and hooked up with the kids there and taught them skateboarding. And uh, somewhere along the line, uh, we decided that a skate park would be a great idea for a house. In the spring of 2015, Get On Board and Land Yachts started an online fundraising to build a skate park for the remote island-based community. Around the same time, the Leviathan 2, a whale watching boat, capsized in the Pacific Ocean near Housing. The unthinkable, an afternoon of whale watching gone horribly wrong. Calgarian Dwayne Mazaru and his wife were on board. One month after the disaster, Mazaru is finally telling his harrowing story. I remember looking over uh, to the right hand side of the boat and seeing a, a, a wave coming. I remember thinking, oh, that's a pretty big wave. I better hang on. We're probably going to get rocked a little bit. But it didn't tip back, it just kept going. Um, and pretty quick, there are people flying over my head and into the water. And within a split second, I was in the water as well underneath the boat. Eventually, Mazaru managed to grasp a life preserver ring and find his wife, Elisa, in the chaos. We knew we, knew we were at a point where we were kind of helpless in the water. And so all we had was, was the hope that someone would come and rescue us. They waited for about an hour in frigid waters. There was a boat, one of many, that came out that day from a house at First Nation to help save lives. It means our lives, I guess. We are, we're able to come home to our, our two young kids. In the past few weeks, the Mazaroos have been trying to think of a way to say thank you. Then a strange twist. They realize the house at First Nation is trying to build a skate park. And you are? I happen to build skateboard parks for a living. <laughs> So Mazaru and his company have vowed to help with design, resources, even financially. They've started a Facebook page to help fundraise too. We're just so grateful that we're, we're still here. And As a result of the rescue, we just decided to make it happen. I think it was a positive in that um, the kids gravitated towards a new activity. Some people were saying, oh, they're just gonna go there and party there. But you know, I see kids there every day. Even in the rain, they're there. Two years ago, with the help of uh, New Line Skate Parks, I asked if I could go to uh, the All Nation Skate Jam, which takes place at the same time as the biggest powwow gathering in North America in Albuquerque, New Mexico. The All Nation Skate Jam is uh, an idea I had back about nine years ago. I started seeing a lot of kids on the reservation were skating, and it, it really grabbed their attention. It, I mean, it was like a magnet. So we decided to do something more with it and use skateboarding as a tool 
to try to reach them and try to inspire and try to uh, give them a good path to be on. Try to get, get them away from drugs and alcohol, plus keep them very, you know, athletic fit. We decided to do it down in Albuquerque during the time of the world's biggest powwow, which is the Gathering of Nations, where people come from all over the U.S., even Canada. So this year, Swan Campbell, who is the grandson of Frenchie and Michelle, who are Dwayne's rescuers, is going to be going down to the All Nations Skate Jam and participating. And what I'm hoping is that it ignites a real passion, not just for skateboarding in the Ahouset community, but also just that the kids can recognize that they can fulfill whatever dreams they have if they set their minds to it. I think it's amazing in that um, we have a young fella like Swan going to this event because for me the message to the other kids is that um, if Swan can do it, I can. If he can do it, any of our kids can do it. So I think that's the main message for me is that Swan is, is an example of what can be done. Skateboarding now in Indian country, it's it's the fastest growing sport. And it's a lot because of those kids, those, those same kids are on the fringe. And skateboarders and Indians have a lot of similarities because we've lived our lives being told that uh, we don't want you there, we want you here, we're gonna put you here, only be here, only do this. And we're gonna instruct you on how to do it. Well, that's the way our reservation life was. And as, for a skateboarder, we have always felt the same because the best places to skate, they didn't want us to skate. So our, our kids really gravitate to it and it's a good test of their warrior spirit that's still in them, that blood still flows in them. This is a little throwing a pebble in, in water, but you never know what the tidal wave is from the ripple effect. 